Hi everyone and welcome to Thai Native Gems. This is Tarun Gupta and after a long time I'm making another tutorial video about gemstone treatments. In today's video I'm going to check if these two round blue sapphires that I had just recently purchased for my client to custom make her blue sapphire earrings are treated with lattice or chemical diffusion or if they are just normal heat treated blue sapphires. Also, before I start the deep dive into how I will go about checking this, I would like to apologize in advance regarding the delay in making these type of videos. Unfortunately, they do take a lot of time to make and edit, and we don't realize how difficult it is until we try creating them. I am actually pretty amazed at how there are so many talented YouTube content creators are out there. Anyways. Let's go get back to the topic in today's video and checking if the sapphire is treated with normal heat treatment or with lattice or chemical diffusion. First, before we go into investigating, let's briefly discuss why are sapphires treated in the first place. Almost all sapphires, 95% of them in the market, are either heat are treated by heat treatment. There are different levels of heat treatment in sapphires that can be classified from very slight which we traders call as normal heat treatment to quite extreme which is called titanium beryllium diffuse sapphires or lattice diffusion sapphires. The more aggressive the treatment the more the price drops as these type of sapphires are less rare than the untreated or normal heat treatment sapphires. For example the sapphires we are looking at in this video are normal heat treatment and it cost my client around $1,500 per carat while beryllium treated blue sapphires will cost around $15 per carat or 100 times less expensive. So why do gem cutters and dealers treat sapphires? The simple answer is heat treatment makes the sapphire look a lot more attractive and are a lot easier to sell. So therefore it is used either to develop or intensify the colors, sapphire's natural color. Sometimes natural sapphires are really dark in color or light in color or it is not blue at all. The normal treatment makes the sapphire either lighter or darker blue in color or intensifies it. Chemical diffusion like beryllium or titanium diffusion goes one step further by adding elements into the sapphire and therefore either intensify the color or change the color completely. So that is why it is important for us to detect the difference between normal heat treatment sapphires versus chemical gray diffused sapphires. Please also note that what I am going doing today is just a rough visual test in checking if the sapphire is treated by lattice diffusion or not. This is not 100% accurate test and the best way to check if the stone is treated with chemical diffusion is by sending it to the large lab and where they can check using SIMS which is secondary ion mass spectrometry or LAICPMS laser ablation inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry sorry for the word jargons but these are the machines they use and if i mispronounce it i apologize but it is it is a word <laughs> uh, salad to say it these machines cost over $400,000, which makes it almost impossible for smaller labs to have it. So if you are not sure if your stone is treated with lattice diffusion, you do have to send it to the bigger labs so they can use these machines to check it. All right, so let's continue with this video and let me investigate if these stones are lattice diffused or just normal heat treatment. So the first thing I'm going to do is immerse these sapphires in water with diffused white lighting setting which we have on our microscope here. Ideally, one should actually immerse these stones with methanol iodide, which has similar refractive index or RI of 1.74 to sapphires or the corundum family, which has a refractive index or RI of 1.76 to 1.77. But currently I don't have methanol iodide, so I'm using water. And water itself has a refractive index of 1.33 which is less and therefore more difficult to see the lattice diffusion treatment. But this is what I have and this is what I'm going to use in this video. The reason why I'm doing this is because it has been concluded from the GIS study done in 2003 that the best way to check if the sapphire has any lattice diffusion treatment 
is by observing the color concentrations and the gradients, and which can give us a clue if the stone has been diffused with outside substance or not. I have provided a link of the study in the description below this video, and if you want to read and understand more about it and how to detect that is diffusion of ours or what causes sapphire colors in the first place, I highly recommend it. The study itself is very technical and having some chemistry background will help a lot. But anyways, I'm going to even show you some images they have provided in the study right now that shows how they can detect the difference between naturally heated or untreated sapphires color concentration versus chemically diffused sapphires and their different layers. So the signs we are looking at for is if the sapphire has natural color distribution or does it has a lattice diffusion color layers. Natural color zonings in coronum does not conform to the faceted shape of the stone. Instead, it follows the structure of the corundum's crystal, creating angular zones and parallel bands, as can be seen in this group of non-diffused sapphires. Versus surface conforming layer, which can be seen in this group of faceted beryllium diffused sapphires. So if the, there's a surface conforming layers, which is like, you know, like a round, and it's not angular or shaped away from the stone facets and stuff like that, then that's a clue that maybe the stone is brilliantly treated. This other picture also summarizes what the brilliant treatment does to the sapphire. From left, which is untreated, to fully right removing the dark area and then removing the yellow tinge. As you can see, the angular area has been removed or erased in the center. Also, let's look at some more pictures from this article in the difference between shallow penetration beryllium treated sapphires to deep penetrations. Again, from left to right. The left is more shallow, the right is more deeper penetration. Now, why is this test not 100% accurate? It's because there are cases where stones is treated with diffusion in the rough and then faceted. So it's difficult to see the uniform surface conformal color layer. Also, the second Im image is, is an example of a surface conformal layer and natural color zoning. So they have both signs. This is why if you want to be 100% sure, you should send the stone to the large labs and get advanced spectrometry testing done. Okay, so let's continue with our investigation of these stones. Okay, so the first image I'm showing you here is my setup of my handsome self setting up the stones with a diffused light on the microscope with a glass bowl of water. This is how I'm going to immerse the blue sapphires in the water to check if there's any color zone indicators or if there's beryllium treated or not. So for our first test, we're using two blue sapphires which the dealer informed us it was normally treated, the two big round ones, versus two of them which have been beryllium diffused sapphires that have I have in stock. The two smaller oval ones, as you can see in this picture here. And as you can see in these videos and pictures I'm showing now, there is a difference between normally treated Sri Lankan sapphires versus the beryllium diffused ones in terms of the color zoning which are not conform to the facets of the stone two round ones. The beryllium treated ones shows that there's a big concentration of color in the center and there's less angular zones in it. So I'm just pointing it down here. You see this huge um, blob of color in the middle of the two beryllium ones versus the angular non-color zonings in the normally treated blue sapphires. But also, as you can see from this video, it's not 100% clear that one is beryllium treated and one is heat treated. But with this, you can see 80% confidence that it has been heat treated or beryllium treated. And I can see those angular zones which are now confirmed to the facets, while the, the concentration on color just makes me suspect it and that's beryllium. So hope this helps and now let's look at these stones under the microscope. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all these four stones under the microscope and see if you can t find any clues if the stones have been treated with heat treatment and beryllium treatment. 
I'm actually not expecting much with this test as all four stones have been treated with heat. So I'm expecting to find indication of heat treatment in all four stones. But it's very difficult to tell the difference between a heated stone, normal heated stone and a brilliant treated blue sapphire in, in the microscope. I'm just hoping maybe with this test that we could see that the brilliant ones have been more aggressively treated with higher heat tre temperature. So there are some indications of that versus a normal heat treated sapphires. Anyways, here is the results and let's look at them one by one. So the first video I'm, and images I'm looking at is the normal heated round blue sapphires. And in this stone, we can clearly see the melted crystal inclusion with a healed fracture, which is due to the high temperature heating process. So clearly this, uh, this sapphire has been heat treated. The second image and videos I'm showing you right here is actually the other normal heated round blue sapphire. And in this stone, you can clearly see three or four of these white snowball inclusions, which again is due to high temperature heating process. So again, this is clearly shows that the stone is natural, but has been heat treated. Now this third video and images I'm looking at is the one with the beryllium treated oval blue sapphire. What I see here is highly altered zircon inclusions due to the high temperatures and treatment. I'm actually going to show you this, these images in this GI report, which again, I provided a link below and you can see these are the crystals when they become highly altered after a high treatment. They typically, they are transformed into opaque irregular masses, often with a crackled appearance and a gas bubble in the middle. Unfortunately, my phone camera cannot capture this clearly, but I did try to highlight this with some of the images and video I'm showing right here. And the final video and images I am looking at again is the other beryllium treated oval blue sapphire. On the top center, there is a feather inclusion. And again, it shows signs of heat treatment, like the melted crystals and all that. Otherwise, the stone looks quite clean and slightly cloudy or milky or chalky because of its crystal. Otherwise, I couldn't really find any indication that the stone is beryllium diffused or not. So you cannot really tell if it's heat treated or not. So in summary, after all these four stones in the microscope, you can see that there's definitely not an easy way to tell the difference between heated sapphire and beryllium diffused sapphires. So if you are suspect that the stone has been beryllium diffused, I do highly recommend to send it to the, one of the big labs which have a spectrometry and you could ch check the chemical com composition of the stones. So they, so then can determine if there were some additional chemical is added or not and if it's just normal heat treatment or beryllium diffused. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful and please feel free to subscribe and provide your comments below about your thoughts. Thanks again and hope you all have a good day.